What's up YouTube, welcome back. It's time for more black talent testing, but not your conventional black talent testing. As you know, we like to rebuild ammunition on this channel, so I'm not gonna try to trick you guys. There is no factory 444 Marlin black talent ammunition, but we've made it, so let's have some fun with it. You should check out our previous black talent tests. They're pretty cool. Starting here, we have the nine millimeter, then we have the 44 Magnum, here we have a 500 Magnum version that we created. Here we have a 500 Bushwhacker version. That is really crazy. We shot that out of the 500 Bushwhacker rifle and pistol, revolver. But here we have today's creation, the 444 Marlin. So if you take a 44 Magnum and you stretch it out a whole bunch, you get a 444. Those two projectiles are the same, so this works out pretty easy. There's just a whole bunch more power behind this one. Black Talons are really cool. They don't make them anymore. We even have a video where we've shot Black Talon out of a muzzle loader. So as you can see, we have plenty of fun with it and plenty more fun coming up. We have all kinds of loadings we're gonna put this into. Today, we're gonna be shooting it out of a 10 inch BFR. Very cool revolver. We're gonna save the CVA Scout rifle for the next test. And that's why this is a two part Black Talon 444 Marlin test. We do have two 20 inch 10% clear ballistics gel. This one's not so clear anymore it's a little beat up it's a little bit cloudy but it's a catcher block usually these things don't come out of the first 20 inches if it does it's not going to go too far in my opinion it's the destruction you get in that first 20 inches that's crazy as we shoot the gel block we're going to have the chronograph in front of it so that hopefully we catch the velocity therefore we can calculate foot pounds i'm going to take a couple warm-up shots here on this target real quick just to get a feel for the gun for today and make sure i'm zeroed so that i hit the block right square where we're supposed to so basically let's see what happens let's see how bad we can get this talon to rip things apart we're actually going to start off on steel real quick i have a couple ftx rounds loaded up semi-hot they're going to get progressively hotter so I just want to see what these do on steel and well that zeroed pretty good I'd say <laughs> zoom in on that camera guy real quick these things are pretty heavy in the hand I know I look wobbly but that was a good hit let's see if I can do it again Boom. Zoom in on that one. That's awesome. So we got a hole in a hole right there. This thing is pretty darn zeroed at this distance. I'm going to get just a little bit closer and see if it changes point of aim, point of impact. And don't worry, I've got that steel angled properly, in my opinion. Oh, a little chipmunk is walking by. He's so lucky right now. He went fast enough. Well, what the heck? Let's do it left-handed. Nice. A little bit low into the left. That's definitely not point of aim, point of impact as far as up and down. That was just me shooting low to the left with my left hand. So let's move over to the chronograph and see what we get out of some of these other loads we have. Okay, there's your typical 240 grain 44 Magnum bullet like we all know. The soft hollow point semi-jacketed. That's in new brass and that's loaded with H335. Let's see what that does on the chronograph and the target. that's pretty accurate we got 1958 out of that one very nice bingo all right next we have a 225 grain barnes xpb loaded with a cfe black Twenty-one sixty. Little bit higher, but I'll take it. 125 grain extreme penetrator from Lehigh Defense loaded with CFE black. This will be an interesting one. Let's see how fast we can get this thing cooking. This is actually on the low end of the loading. I have a whole bunch loaded up and we're gonna work them up, but I'm interested to see what this light of a grain weight will do out of this handgun. Nice. I was a little bit low when I broke that trigger, so that's my fault for being low. Not the gun at all. 2407, we definitely kicked up velocity. And that was my poor shooting. All right, 250 grain, black talon going in. We are 15 feet off that chronograph, 15 feet off that gel block. Let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be interesting no matter what. It picked her up a little bit, 1817.
All right, 1817 and holy BFR beast mode right here. Look at that entry. We definitely see some cool stuff right there. That cord out that 40 cal, well, actually 429 diameter or 43 caliber hole. And there we see the starring effect. That thing, it just broke its talons off real quick. So there we go with just an awesome pedal dispersion right there. These bullets aren't designed to do that. They're not supposed to go this fast, but boy, when they do, it is really cool. That initial wound cavity is just something else. That's a big, big wound cavity right there. And then going down through the block, it doesn't settle down too much. I mean, that's nasty right there. That bullet completely came apart right here. Let me get the tape out. All right, so there are fragments of that bullet. That's pretty much the copper jacket from that thing. They start breaking apart and going into pieces at 16 inches. And then you see another piece at about 18 and a half inches. The final piece is right there at about 20 inches. I know the tape's a little off. The block gets a little stretched sometimes. But the bullet itself has gone into the next block. We're going to have to come over here and take a look from the top. You can see where it left the block there and then entered here into the dirty block. So we actually did make it out. I think this is probably the farthest we've made it out of a block so far with the black talon. I could be wrong, but we'll get these things, these pieces out of here. But first we have to look from the top. Very impressive. We're seeing the same thing, but from a different angle. That is one heck of an entrance wound right there, followed by a very decent continuous wound path all the way down to where that thing started breaking to pieces and what's left of the core of it landed right there. We did have a bounce back, so I would say looking at the tape, I gotta kind of stretch around and look real quick. We have a bounce back from about three and a half inches down to about the one and a half inch mark where it settled out. So that definitely made it pretty far into that second block. Very cool. Sorry to look a little different than normal. We had to come inside for this part, but we do have two of these talons. I didn't want to rip that whole block apart. I have to compare it tomorrow when we do the other test but these were the two easy ones to get out. It's very sharp. It is like the typical black talon. That is a little razor blade right there in the front. And then we have what's left of the projectile. You'll see the weight and the diameter up in the corner. It did lose a lot of weight, but each one of these pedals it lost, or talons, whatever you want to call it, yeah, peeled back pieces of copper, they each weigh a significant amount, plus some of them lost other pieces. You saw that starburst. There is lead left in that block on top of that. But this thing really has nothing left of it. It's pretty smooshed. It doesn't resemble what a black talon would look like anymore. You can see it has an exposed lead base, and you can see it definitely did peel back, but it lost everything, all of its jacket and all those little tips and all that stuff. You guys saw an awesome temporary wound cavity there in the slow motion. You see a really good permanent wound cavity. We didn't show accuracy testing for this round because they're hard to come by, so I don't want to go through a whole bunch of them. But I'm pretty sure if you have your gun lined up for 240 grain, then 250 grain is not going to be that big of a difference. If you got 44 Magnum Black Talon, you know what you can do with it now. Of course, there's better options out there, but some things are just fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this version of a Black Talon reworking. You know we're not going to stop there. Like I said, next you're going to see the 444 Marlin Black Talon go out of the 444 Marlin. CVA scout rifle and that's also going to be an interesting video because I'm going to attempt to shoot that gun with no optics just for fun if you like what we're doing here at the turkey's opinion then thumbs up and shares always help definitely leave some comments let us know what you think about this testing black talons in general maybe the 444 marlin if you really like us and you want to help support the channel we are on patreon and we do have the youtube join button turned on thank you to everybody who's already at both of those places hope to see you at the next video thank you for watching this one and until we do see you next time Stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.